Welcome to the What Works Clearinghouse WWC Advanced Group Design Standards Training. This first introduction module provides an overview of core concepts, important logistics, and key resources referenced in this training series. You can access all of the resources mentioned in this module through the WWC's website at whatworks.ed.gov. This module introduces the WWC Advanced Group Design Standards Training. In this module, we outline the purpose and goals of this training and explain reviewer certification options. We also describe logistics related to the training, including how to access additional resources. Finally, we introduce and provide a brief overview of the topics that will be covered in subsequent modules. The WWC offers this training to inform the public about our design standards, increase transparency of our review process, and promote the use of rigorous research. The purpose of this training is to describe and explain key elements of the WWC Regression Discontinuity Design, or RDD, standards and how the WWC uses those standards to identify high-quality, rigorous research. The training also describes the WWC standards for reviewing evidence from randomized controlled trials, or RCTs, that estimate complier average causal effects, or cases. The training will explain how the WWC reviews advanced group design studies, and will prepare those who are interested in pursuing the WWC Advanced Group Design Reviewer Certification. This Advanced Group Design Standards Training, focused on RDD and CASE, is free and open to the public for anyone interested in the WWC's procedures and standards. However, it might not be right for everyone interested in learning more about the What Works Clearinghouse. First, anyone interested in becoming certified in the RDD and CASE standards first must become certified in the version 5.0 group design standards. Additionally, although this training will go into depth on the advanced group design standards, it is not a comprehensive training on research methods or on RDD and case methods. Most trainees who pursue advanced group design certification have a graduate degree. That includes a background in quantitative research methods. The training assumes that the trainee has a strong grasp of linear regression as it is typically used in education research and some familiarity with both RDD and case. The training will reference many research concepts relevant to regression discontinuity designs and complier average causal effects, but it will only discuss them in the context of the WWC standards. Many slides will present modeling specifications using formulas typically found in education research. The ability to read and interpret these regression formulas is important to understanding the training content and is also critical when conducting WWC reviews of advanced group design studies. Without prior training in research methods, some parts of the training may be difficult to follow. For members of the public who are interested in learning more about the WWC in general, but may not be as interested in an in-depth understanding of the WWC's procedures and standards, the WWC resources page contains links to many helpful products, such as the linked video on using the WWC website to find evidence-based programs and practices. The PDF of the slide deck available on the website also has an additional slide at the end that provides some introductory references for anyone interested in a more comprehensive introduction to RDD or case methods. We recommend that you proceed sequentially through the modules in this training series 
because later modules revisit and build upon concepts taught in earlier modules. After completing a chapter or module, you can use the button in the middle of the screen to continue moving through the training, or use the menu on the left to navigate through the modules. You can also download and print the slides from each module to view offline. We encourage you to take your time with the training and not try to complete it in one sitting. You can return to the training or start any module at any time by using the table of contents. There are several resources available to you to supplement your learning during this training series. The WWC Procedures and Standards Handbook is a key resource. The handbook documents all the procedures and standards discussed in this training and includes information about how the WWC reviews, documents, and reports on studies. Throughout the training, we will direct you to the handbook to learn more about a particular topic. You should also consult the study review protocol to learn more about the scope and parameters of study reviews. The study review protocol guides the reviews of all studies under the WWC Procedures and Standards Handbook, version 5.0, including those cited as evidence for U.S. Department of Education grant competitions, studies that were funded by the department, and studies identified for systematic reviews of evidence based on a search of the research literature in a particular topic area. The WWC also publishes topic area synthesis protocols, which under version 5.0 of the handbook will provide topic-specific parameters regarding the study identification and study eligibility for reviews under a given topic area. Note that on the WWC website, you can also access protocols used under previous versions of the standards. The WWC maintains a robust archive of webinars that supplement and reinforce key concepts covered in this training, as well as additional resources for educators, study authors, and WWC reviewers. The WWC also maintains a comprehensive list of frequently asked questions. You may find this resource helpful as you learn more about the WWC our products and resources, the review process, and the advanced group design standards. You can access a list of questions and answers through the FAQ link through the Help Desk menu tab on the WWC homepage or from the Resources menu on the training page. Finally, the WWC's Help Desk responds to inquiries from the public on various topics you can submit to the help desk any technical questions about how to access the training modules and resources, or any questions about the content covered in the training. Please note, however, that the WWC cannot provide active technical assistance to researchers designing studies. You can find these resources on the WWC website at whatworks.ed.gov in either the Help Desk menu tab, or in the Resources menu on the training page. To become a certified reviewer, trainees must pass a certification exam that tests knowledge of the standards covered in the training. We advise trainees to watch all nine modules before attempting the certification exam. The WWC allows four attempts at passing the exam. The certification exam is linked in the PDF version of the slides, and also on the Advanced Group Design training page. After becoming certified in the WWC's Advanced Group Design Standards, reviewers can choose to be included in the list of certified reviewers on the WWC website. You may be eligible to conduct reviews for the WWC, and certified reviewers who provide their contact information may be contacted to assist with review efforts by organizations that perform reviews in support of WWC activities. Of note, the WWC will contact any certified reviewers if and when there are updates to the WWC standards 
that may require additional certification activities to maintain one's current reviewer certification. The content for this training in WWC Advanced Group Design Standards is divided into several modules that follow a consistent structure. Each module includes a summary of the objective for the module, detailed information on the module topic, including examples and knowledge checks to reinforce content and test what you have learned. The WWC Advanced Group Design Standards Training Series contains nine separate modules. The first and current module of the training provides a general introduction to the training and reviewer certification options. The second module focuses on the type of research designs that can be reviewed using the WWC's Regression Discontinuity Design Standards. The module also discusses what criteria are used to determine whether a study is eligible for WWC review as a regression discontinuity design study. The third module describes the WWC's RDD Standard 1, referred to as the Integrity Standard, throughout this training, which requires RDD studies to establish the integrity of the forcing variable used in the design. The fourth module describes the WWC's RDD Standard 2, referred to as the Attrition Standard throughout this training, which requires RDD studies to have acceptable levels of overall and differential attrition rates. The fifth module describes the WWC's RDD Standard 3, referred to as the Continuity Standard throughout this training, which requires RDD studies to establish continuity of the relationship between the outcome and the forcing variable. The sixth module describes the WWC's RDD Standard 4, referred to as the Functional Form and Bandwidth Standard throughout this training, which requires regression discontinuity design studies to demonstrate adequate specification of functional forms and bandwidths used during impact estimation. The seventh module describes the WWC's RDD Standard 5, or the Fuzzy RDD Standard, which is only applicable when reviewing evidence from studies using fuzzy regression discontinuity designs. The eighth module describes the study review guide that is used to document findings from a WWC review of a regression discontinuity design study. That module also discusses the purpose of the study review guide, the major components of the study review guide, and how to enter information from a study into the guide. And finally, the ninth module describes the standards that are used for reviewing evidence from randomized controlled trials that report complier average causal effect or case estimates. This concludes our introduction to the WWC Advanced Group Design Standards Training. Let's review what we discussed in this module. We covered the purpose of the training and who should complete the training. We described the logistics related to the training and covered the different certification options available to reviewers. Remember that you can access all of the resources mentioned in this module through the WWC website at whatworks.ed.gov. We now will begin the training series by discussing regression discontinuity designs in the second module.